subjects who had just fallen in love, men showed more activity in a little brain region associated with the integration of visual stimuli, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, for millions of years, men needed to look at a woman to size her up to see if she could bear him healthy babies. And women around the world still spend their lives trying to look good for men. And men spend much more time looking at visual pornography. It's probably because um, the visual uh, system is more linked in to romantic love among men. Among women, we found more activity in three brain regions associated with memory recall. And at first I thought, memory recall? And then I thought, oh yes, a million years ago, and even today, a woman can't look at a man and know whether he's going to be a good husband and a good father. She's got to remember. She has to remember what he promised to do last Christmas, what he didn't do last summer, what he said he would do next year. She had to remember. And in fact, women spend their lives on the telephone recounting what he did and what he didn't do. And what we're really doing is creating a memory trail for our reproductive good. And something that is what everybody wants to know, how to find the right person. And you're working on that and developed a system to, to help people find the right person, right? Yeah. Yes, I did. What is it? Well, I wanted to know why it is that you fall in love with one person rather than another. In fact, a, a, a dating service, Match.com, came to me four years and asked me that very question. Why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? And I said, I don't know. Uh, nobody knows. Psychologists do know that we tend to fall in love with somebody from the same socioeconomic background, same general level of intelligence, same general level of good looks, religious and social values are important. Your childhood plays a role, but nobody knows how. And so, but that's only about 50% of who we are. A great many of our characteristics come out of our biology. For example, some people are more curious than others. Some are more agreeable, some are more exacting, some are more uh, aggressive. So I began to think maybe I could look at the basic brain systems that code for constellations of personality traits, create a questionnaire to see to what degree you express the basic chemical systems, dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen, and then watch and see who is drawn to whom. What I really wanted to understand was what people mean when they say, we had chemistry, mm. or we didn't have chemistry. I thought maybe there's something to that. So when I looked at the brain, um, there's four basic chemical systems associated with personality traits. For example, if you are expressive of the dopamine system, I call these people explorers. They tend to be novelty-seeking, curious, creative, risk-taking, spontaneous, impulsive, often very generous, very liberal, uh, very flexible-minded. Uh, people who are very expressive of serotonin, what I call builders, tend to be traditional, um, conventional, cautious but not fearful, calm, social, um, popular, uh, managerial. They are, are very good at the pillars of society. They're conscientious. They're loyal. Um, the third type I call the director. They're very expressive of testosterone. Those were the builders, the, the second yeah, one. Yeah. Um, the third is the... Um, the are those who express testosterone, both men and women. These people tend to be analytical, logical, direct, decisive, tough-minded, um, emotionally contained, often very assertive, uh, very ambitious. These are the workaholics. They're also very good at math, engineering, mechanics, uh, computers. Uh, they've got what, they're good at what we call uh, rule-based systems. The fourth type are what I call the negotiators. They are expressive of estrogen, and this is men as well as women. I think Bill Clinton is a good example. Um, these people tend to see the big picture. They're contextual, uh, holistic thinkers. They're very imaginative. They've got very good uh, people skills. They've got very good verbal skills. They're emotionally expressive. They're idealistic and they're altruistic. So I created a questionnaire with 56 questions to see to what degree you expressed the dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen system, to what degree you were the explorer, the builder, the director, and the negotiator. And then in a sample of 28,000 people on the dating site chemistry.com, the sister site of match.com, um, I watched who's drawn to whom. And I now have 7 million people who've taken the questionnaire in 40 countries worldwide, including Brazil, I think. And um, I'm beginning to analyze some of the international data. But um, I'm watching who is drawn to whom. And as it turns out, there are real patterns in nature. Um, people who are very uh, expressive of dopamine 
uh, the explorer type are drawn to people like themselves. They want somebody who's going to get off the couch with them and go to the movies and go to the theater, go to the museums, uh, go skydiving, whatever it is. They're full of energy and they want a companion to come with them. They're also very flexible and they want that flexibility in their partner. The builder, the high serotonin type, is traditional and they want a traditional partner like themselves. Somebody who's very family oriented, who's conscientious, who's loyal, um, who's going to help build their social networks with them. In those two cases, um, likes marry likes. But in the other two cases, the director and the negotiator, people are drawn to their opposites. The director is drawn to the negotiator and the negotiator is drawn to the director. Why? And I think the reason is because they're pooling very different resources. For example, the negotiator can think of so many ways of doing things, and they're so agreeable, um, and they sort of need the director to be decisive, to be direct, to be tough-minded. As um, a matter of fact, I'm very much of the negotiator, and I appreciate people who tell me like it is, because I'm not too capable of doing that. I mean, certainly in my business I am, but uh, not in my social life. And um, I think that the director, they have poorer people skills, and I think they need the graciousness, the verbal skills, the people skills, the compassion of the negotiator. So when you go down the list of the traits of those two types, you can see over and over and over that um, they complement each other. So it's as if Mother Nature has tried it every single way. Um, opposites attract individuals pooling very different resources to raise their babies. Um, I think uh, the builders are capitalizing on some very strong abilities to be conscientious and loyal and stay together to raise their children. The question becomes, why would two explorers be attracted to each other? Because these individuals, I mean, who's going to take care of the baby when they rush off to, you know, Mount Everest together? But I think what's going on, and I don't know yet, is that these people are more likely to have a series of pair bonds, a series of marital relationships with children by more than one partner. And what they're doing is creating genetic variety in their young. So Mother Nature has thought of everything, as usual. Some people have a prejudice against online dating, online matchmaking. Um, but it's so successful. Why? Uh, 